Hey everyone, Pot ISM. Welcome to my inbox review of the Model Factory Hero 112 Cobra 427. Yes, so I have one of these due to a very, very generous donatee. I don't know if that's the right word. Uh, we're going to refer to it as PK. Uh, myself and Joe Camillari, uh, also known as Bobcat, uh, both received these kits in the mail. I got mine on Wednesday, and Joe got his on Thursday, I think it was. Or was it Wednesday? Both Wednesday? Might have been, I forget now. Awesome kit of a beautiful car, and I thought, I've got to do a review. I've reviewed all my others. We're partway starting into the Ferrari. This build will be next, 100% after it, I think. Um... I've had a very, very quick look through the box. Very quick look. I haven't looked at anything else in depth at all. So you're going to get my first reaction on the kit. So we're going to go through it. We're not going to sit there for an hour and a half like we did on Lancia. It's probably going to be an hour long. But we'll go through all the parts. You don't have to sit and watch. But I'm going to go through all the main interesting parts as opposed to every single little bit. So there you go. Get a cup of tea, get some biscuits, get your feet up, and let's have a look through this kit. Okay, so we've got the iconic red Model Factory Hero box. This is the Cobra. I hope we can get it in shot. Oh, we can. There we go. Cobra 429, 112 full detail kit. This is version A, which is a 66 Daytona and a 65 SCAA kit as well. So, iconic box. I move the camera up a touch. We've got no background on the bench for now. While we have a look at the box content and the body because they're huge. And uh, once we go to the smaller parts, I'll put the background on the bench so you can hopefully see things a little bit better. So we open the box, we'll get everything out. So we've got our instruction pamphlet. So there's our instructions in there. That is the scheme that comes with the kit. So have a look at that in a little bit. Lots of wrapping. I have been in here. It was better wrapped than I am showing now. But um, we'll get everything out because I was excited, if I'm honest. I didn't put it back in this box properly. So we'll just ditch all the bubble wrap on the floor for now. And we'll get back to that later. So there's the body shell. Again, we'll have a closer look in a minute. We'll just get everything out. We've got a very crinkly bag of resin there. Another bag of resin. Some more resin. Some more resin. And a whole heap of bits and bobs. Now these were packaged in a separate bag, but of course I have been in here, so... They are all out. We've got our back room, back room, back form window, which is um, always fun to do. Wheels and uh, sorry, the tires are beautiful. We'll have a good look at those in a little bit. But underneath is where the paint starts. These are the bits that oh, that will test your patience on these kits. We've got some nice turned aluminium wheels there, which are lovely. And we have got one, two, three. Four, five bags of PE. We've got loads of parts that have fell out. So we're going to put all these somewhere safe so we do not lose them. And then we're going to get the big giant box, which is currently now empty. And we're going to pop it out of the way. So the kits could come with a little bit of packaging. They just need a little bit more um cushion protection for the kit but overall they're all right they're not too bad so one thing i'm going to do is i'm going to get all these loose white metal parts which are here i'm just going to search in amongst this cling film and cardboard there's none there i'm going to have a little look in there there's nothing in there i'll save that from the sandwiches and we're just going to pop these back in a bag for safekeeping. Now, if you find any little bits, you're not sure what they are, chuck them back in the bag, no matter what it is. You never know if it's a little spigot or something that's broken off or uh, a part. And you never know, you know, six months into the build, down the line, you may be like, oh crap, where's that? And hey ho, there it is. It was that bit you threw in the bin thinking it was a bit of scrap white metal. So we'll get to the white metal in a little bit. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to cut for a second, put my background down, bring my camera back down to the bench so we can get a better look at everything we're working on. 
Right, there we go. We're back on the bench. Here we are. Right, so we'll start off with the body shell. We'll have a quick look at this. So, it's a good size body. It is 112 scale. Um, the resin's not bad. It's going to need a lot of cleanup. There's lots of wisps of flash here, as you see along the bottom edge of the sills, around the wheel arch, in amongst all the uh, cutouts on the side. Is all going to need cleaning up. So, I reckon a couple of hours with a file and a few sanders will get this um, all cleaned up nice. But I can't, see, other than the edges, I can't see actual flaws in the body. It all looks fairly good. We've got the strengthening piece here that's going to need cutting off. But once that's off, this is the only structural part left. So you need to be very, very careful once that's done. Um, so that's one of the last steps, definitely. But lots of holes to drill for the tonneau cover snaps. Um, but overall, the resin's pretty good. It's a good sized car. I don't think it's quite as big as the 250 GTO I've got. Um, it's an iconic Cobra uh, with the beautiful 427 engine in it. Uh, but overall, I think the, the body looks quite good. It's quite clean, other than a few wisps and a quick clean up. It's just going to need a bit of a run round. In the recesses here, the wheel arches, there's a few bits of uh, random resin in there. But like I say, a quick run over with some sanders, some files. And you'll soon have that all ready to uh, go together really nice. Got our interior tub here as well. As I fit in with the firewall. Which way round does it go? It's going to go that way, isn't it? So that will fit in there eventually. Yep. So, yep. Interesting. <laughs> to say the least, I'm just going to pop this to one side as I run over bubble wrap and scare the life out of myself. Because it sounds like we run over resin. So we've got the floor pan interior. So again, nothing really to look at. It's just a cast piece of white resin. Um, there's no damage. One important thing on these kits is to look around for damage. My 250 GTO had several parts that were cracked uh, or mismolded, short run molds. Um, so go around and check everything. But again, it's all pretty simple. Quick rub over with a sander to get rid of any wisps of flash. And that will be cleaned up and ready to go. So no problems there. Excuse the rustling of the bags because they are going to rustle, unfortunately. There's not much you can do about that. So we've got the doors, which are there. Any problems on the doors? No, nope, the doors look good. I'll show you those quickly. A few wisps of resin around the edge. They're going to need sorting. But overall, pretty easy to do. Obviously, there will be a door skin on the inside as well. So no problems there. So two of those. Make sure you've got the right left and hand there, uh, the left and the right hand. Got inner wheel arches again. Are the opposing sides? They are. Are they fully molded? They are. Is one thicker than the other? They are. You can see the difference there and that. Look at that. Difference in the molding thickness. Yep. So well worth checking everything out. Be careful of parts like this because obviously this has snapped off its pore plug that would have been originally. Molded probably on there like that or like that. So check for damage where it's snapped off. Luckily, there's plenty of actual resin left there, so there's no damage. So again, there's nothing really to look at at these parts. They're pretty boring, to be honest. Uh, just inner structures. Again, this looks like the firewall. And again, all nicely molded. So you can hear my phone vibrating. Which will move it away from the mic. Yeah, again, no damage. All fully molded. No problem there. Same with the interior floor pan as well. We've got another little bag of bits here too. Actually quite a bit of resin with this kit. The kits vary in the amount of resin and white metal. This one's got quite a bit in it. We've got this one that could be the boots, boot floor, is it? Is that the boot floor? I can't quite tell. Got a nice uh, Molofretti Hero embossed logo on there. A bit of detail as well. And again, all fully molded, just needs a quick run over. The pore plug stub's still there, so that can be cut off with a razor saw. No problem. Same as this one, pore, pore stub's still there, cut off and cleaned up. I'd rather have that there than snapped off, because that's where it can put stress and crack up the, uh, the resin. So I'd rather have that all day long. Uh, the rest of it, all fully molded, all nice and straight, no damage. These um, connection lugs here, no problem at all. A few wisps of resin here. And again, bits like that. See that little piece there? That looks like an excess piece of resin, that. Make sure it's meant to be there before you commit to cutting it off. So, yeah, that is my recommendation there. And the last bag of resin 
in the crinkliest bag in the world is in here. So apologies for the noise. I do apologise. Right, so let's start with this sprue. So we got our ladder chassis there, which again still connected to its power stubs. All the engine mounts are still there. It's all fully moulded. No issues there. It needs a bit of clean up. These two parts still connected, fully moulded. Got a left and a right hand. Just trying to envision that. Yeah, they look like the opposite side. So they're all there. Again, not the best poured resin. It's a bit, you know, it's a little bit hit missing places, but it is what these kits are like. There's a seam down the center of the pour plug where it's been poured in the mold. But a quick run over with sander will soon sort that. But more importantly, make sure it's all there. A short run as well, like the end of this hasn't quite had the resin run. So this will be fully molded. This one will be short because it's not done the full mold of the kit. So if it's like that, contact Model Factory Hero, request a replacement part. They're pretty good. They'll send you it out, and they'll send you a origami. Um, I call them dinosaurs, but I think it's meant to be a swan or something. I don't know. It looks like a stegosaurus to me. Uh, the customer support's been good for me so far, uh, but contact them directly. Uh, there's an email address in the instructions, and they're good. But make sure everything isn't damaged. Make sure it's there and make sure it's fully molded. I've seen several short runs on these kits and it will ruin your day, basically. And the time to do that is when you buy the kit, not when you're building it. So you want to go through this whole kit and check off that every single part that should be there is there. Because uh, you don't want to be getting halfway through the build and realise you're missing a seat. Or you've got the left seat, two left seats, uh, because it's easily done that way. Uh, speaking of the seats, here's one. They're, they're actually really nice. Obviously, period style seats. Let me just click on that so it focuses. Yeah, very, very nice. So we've got two of those. Obviously, this one has snapped off its pore stub. Just there. Thankfully, it has left no damage. But I am kind of pedantic about this. Excuse my fingernails, peeps. I've been doing a little bit of DIY at home. I've got a bit of oil from the car. I shall clean that up momentarily. I know some people don't like the fingernails, but I am a modeler. I've been changing filters on the car this morning. Came straight out of the cave and thought, you know what, I'm going to do this review, so bear with me. Um, yeah, if parts are snapped off, look at where they're snapped off from. So that one is snapped off from there. And if you look at the part itself, you can see where it's actually physically snapped off. So just make sure there's no damage, i.e. when you sand that, there's no more physical damage. On the doors of my uh, Ferrari 250, the, the pore stubs were on the top here. And where they've been cut off, it actually put an indentation on the top of the door, so I requested new doors. So it's well worth going around and having a look. Um, the rest of the parts are all fully cast, properly cast. I say molded, it is actually cast. Um, so there's no problems there. That one's broken off, but it's fine. That seat there has got... See, now look at the top. There's a little bit of flash on top of that seat. See that? Where it looks like this bit's missing. But if you look at it, it is just excess flash. Once you sand that back, it'll be fine. This is the time to check this and get it sorted. Engine block, fully cast, no problems at all. Pour stub still on there. This little piece here has snapped off that uh, pour stub as well. And right there. So you can see the kind of damage you can actually get. You can see where that edge is perfectly straight. And that edge is slightly curved where that is snapped off. So if I was to look at that, I'm going to have to sand that. So we'll do that in here, and you'll see what I mean. To get that flat, because it's snapped and it's taken the very center of that part with it, that may make the part unusable. But I would say, if you look at that, that looks pretty symmetrical. So these are the bits to check. Definitely check. You're paying a premium for these kits. They should all be perfect out of the box. We've got this little tank here. Again, it's snapped off the pore stub there, and that has got damage on it. And that's exactly what I'm talking about. I know it might seem trivial. You've got a bit of rim all around the edge of that. And you can see there where it's snapped off, and it's taken a piece of the part you actually need. So I'm not being funny. I will request another one of these. It's snapped off this pore stub somewhere. 
it'd be that piece there. It snapped off right there. Can you see that? Look. And there is the actual part of the piece I actually need. Still on the poor stub. Now, you could maybe cut that off. And get her back in. The point is, it shouldn't be like that. It really should not be like that. And this is what annoys me with this, because this is down to improper packing of the parts. So if I just sand that back a touch, let's have a look. Yeah, I mean, it's not perfect. You can see it there. If the camera picks it up. Just focus on it. But would it be all right? Possibly. But we'll see about that one. But that, they're the parts you check for. If it's on a larger part like this, I would definitely complain. On the smaller part like that, that's up to you. But this is because this literally flaps around like this and the part gets hit and snaps off. So they're the best you check for on the white metal, uh, the plastic, sorry, the resin. So I would definitely make sure you go through all your resin, check for broken pieces, check for um, short run on the casting, and obviously make sure they're all there as well. But... This is the one thing I'm saying about the packing. It really isn't the best. So double check everything and just make sure it is all there. I can't put this away properly yet. So I'm going to pop it all over there. Excuse me. I move stuff around. Sorry for the rustling. There's not much I can do really. This is unbelievably noisy bags. Right, let's pop all the loose pieces in one bag. Makes sense, doesn't it? We'll get them all out of the way. So not the easiest kits to review these because they are huge. There's a lot in the box, although admittedly there isn't as much as in this one as, say, the Ferrari per se. But there's still a lot in there to go through. So you get the bags everywhere. And as I say, look, bits like this. If you're not sure, keep it. So don't throw it away because it might be an important little bit off a part. The same with these little bits here as well. If you are not sure about them, keep them. Because you never know just going to be a part that could easily be glued back in place. Or if it's something vital, you're going to need at a later date. Right then, go through instructions later. We'll go through the white parts for now. White metal parts, and we'll have a look what we got. So, again, lots of these parts to check off. Lots of these parts are going to be bent. Okay, right. So, hmm, do we get white metal and resin, or are those resin bits in the inside of the doors? Well, look at instructions on that. It looks as though the doors are actually white metal on this. I didn't think they were. That's interesting. I didn't see that. It's, like I said, I've had a very quick look at this, but I've not really been in the box. Wow, they actually fit as well. That's a miracle. Yeah, the fit's not too bad on those at all. On the other side, let's have a look. It's the other thing as well. With every single part, test fit everything. So with that one there, we've got the where it's been cut off its pore stubs with the white metal. It's obstructed in the way. So a quick run of a file there. And those doors fit really well, actually. Very well. So again, make sure you've got the opposing sides. The bonnet slash hood is rather misshapen, as you can see. I often find if you just give it a little bit of a a flex on a flat piece, it can quite often fix it. So with this, you're going to be using your eye to straighten things. So it can be a little bit fiddly, but give it a while and you will get everything to fit. So the bonnet doesn't fit too bad at the front. Obviously, we've got these pore stubs here, which are in the way. But you can see at the back where it's going to need curling over to fit. So a lot of tests fit there, but not too bad. We've got the boot lid or the trunk lid, depending on where you're from. Which again isn't too bad once you get those pore stubs off that'll be good got the bell house not the transmission huge absolutely massive part 
really, really big. So that's cool. We've got the roll cage. So these are made of different... Um, these look as though they're already polished. You see the difference in those? So the roll, roll cage, uh, rollover hoop. Uh, I'm not quite sure what that bit is, but they're a different metal. We're not going to get them out, but we'll see. What looks to be like the radiator surround. There as well. We've got the inlet manifold for the top of the engine. More parts. That looks like a scoop. It's a scoop for the top, is it? It is. The top of that. Actually, the white metal is actually quite nicely made. It is actually quite nice, actually. Um, we've got other parts. Again, I'm not pretending to know what these are until we get into the kit. But not bad. Quite clean, actually. Once you get these for a tumbler, and I would recommend using a tumbler, um, they'll come up nice and clean. So there's the first lot. So quite positive with the doors. If they look like they're going to fit with relative ease. I say that. I know they're not. They're going to be a nightmare. Boot lid and the bonnet look okay. Um, some interesting parts in there as well. Uh, my first step of this build would be to go through and probably clean everything up. It all gets chucked in my tumbler. And then we will arrange it all to check it all off. And then we'll arrange it in boxes in its build order. So, uh, yes, we will do that. Next bag, we've got some smaller bits in here. I'm going to go for all the bags because there's not as many parts on this one as there have been with others. But we're not going to dwell on them too long. Again, all the exhaust are molded in a higher quality. I'd say white metal. Some little parts, we'll look at that in a sec. Lots of parts here. We've got our transmission. It actually fits together really, really well, which is good. We've got more parts there. Lots of bits. I'm not even pretend to know what they are. I really am not, because I have absolutely no idea. But lots of bits. And this is typical of what you're going to get. This is the white metal. It's actually really clean white metal. It really is quite clean. But if you rub your fingers, it will end up black. It will absolutely end up covered in it. Which is why getting it through the tumbler is quite an important stage. And it will really help clean the part up. But loads of parts in there. Some nice little parts with a bit of detail on there. As you can see. Let me zoom out just a touch so it doesn't go too far. So uh, it's a brake caliper. It is a brake caliper. So some nice detail there. We've got... Uh, what else have we got? Trying to pick a few little parts. We've got some suspension components as well. You can see, hang on, if we can focus it. Tap my camera. There we go. Some quite nice suspension components there as well. So, nice bit of detail on some of the parts. They're not actually that bad, to be fair. And these parts are joined together. I will be soldering this as I've been doing on the Ferrari. And the parts fit is really, really good really good so that is nice nice positive uh fitment there so again lots of nice parts in there i'm not pretending to know what they are i haven't got a scooby-doo what they are at all uh, i wish i did i wish i was an expert and i could say this is a valve for this and that but brake calipers nice very small for the age of the car obviously uh, on today's cars these things have massive stoppers on them Got a car like this with this amount of horsepower. I know they're quite a light car, but well, I bet it's still interesting to stand on those brakes because I bet you literally do have to stand on them compared to modern day braking. But lots of nice parts in there. Very high quality as well. We'll have a quick look at those exhaust parts as well, which to me just looks like highly polished or a bit more polished white metal. Have a little look. Yeah, it's definitely still white metal. It's still got the um, seam line on there, so it's all gonna have to be cleaned up. It's just, it just looks higher polished. It just looks like it's been through a tumbler or something by the look of it. So yeah, it's good. It's good. So very nice, nice little touch. Obviously, the cleaner it is to start with, the better it's gonna look in the end. So with those, hmm, we'll be able to clean those up even better and then maybe polish them if you're leaving them black. I don't know what color the exhaust will be on this, whether they will be chrome or not. I am not 100% sure. Oh, it's an interesting bag. There's some interesting bits in there. Let me 
go. We've got our wheels. Oh, the centre of our wheels. I apologise. I'm using a silicone mat today as the background. Uh, I haven't got to take down like I normally do with my uh, card. And it's moving around. It's doing me head a little bit. So there's our wheels there. So they're going to look really nice together on that. Front and rear, we've got engine components, cylinder heads, all sorts of bits in here, some structural bits, uh, bolt heads, more bolt heads, brake discs or rotors, whatever you want to call them, depending on where you're from. Loads of little parts, more brake calipers, all sorts of stuff, suspension arms. Again, lots of bits that require quite a bit of cleanup. We've got another bag of more highly polished parts as well. Including all the wheel knockoffs are in there. The cylinder heads are here as well. Very, very cool. Very nice. So, lots of nice bits in there. Obviously, as we go through the build, and I think this one will be the build after the Ferrari, I'm really going to gear up now and get going on this Ferrari. We've had a few setbacks lately. We've had a few issues with my uh, iMac dying. I've lost everything off it. Um, I've had to start again with everything on the videos, all the thumbnails, intros, the lot, all brand spanking new. So it's kind of set me back a little bit with my videos over the past week. Um, but with some awesome generosity from my buddy Rich Blondin, he bought me a refurbished um, iMac, which I'm now going to use to stream. It's a beautiful 27-inch iMac. Um, and I bought myself a brand new MacBook Pro, which is what I'm going to use for making the videos now. Keep them separate. I've always got a backup and it takes puts less strain on each machine then because both iMovie and Zoom and streaming every day, running them together, it, it, it does put a strain on everything. Um, I'm not getting into the whole Apple versus PC thing, but I love my Macs. Uh, this is the first time my Macs let me down. I still have my original MacBook Pro in the house, I've had for 10 years, it's still running just fine. It just won't work on the latest operating system, so it's a bit slow. But it's still used daily in the house for postage. And uh, yeah, I love it. So thank you to all the generosity. It's been a real roller coaster over the past week or so. But um, yes, it is. Right, we've got our valve covers. Very nicely polished white metal. So I think in the tumbler, given a bit of a sand of some fine, wet and dry. Um, really polished up. You could have those. Wheel knockoffs. Yeah, these are just really nicely finished parts. This is how all the kits should come. If we're completely honest, at the price point, every single part of the kit should come like this. Every single one should be finished like this. But alas, it's not. Okay, it's a bit random. So why have that as a separate part? Why would you do that? Hmm. Okay, different, but that's going to look really cool. Cool, those are gloss tips. Big, aren't they? They are huge. Imagine the noise out of this thing. It would sound immense. It would sound absolutely epic. Really would. Right, let's put these in, back in, and uh, we'll look at the next bag. Right then, another bag of white metal. These all look to be like structural parts. So there's the uh, windscreen. Wow. That's kind of need reshaping a bit, isn't it? I don't think that's going to quite fit on there like that, is it? What do you think? <laughs> yes, that's going to need a fair bit of reshaping that one. Oh my good God. <sighs> yep, that's going to be interesting. Got some chassis work here as well. Again, with these parts, when they're all bent like this, put them on your bench and just flatten them. Honestly, it will straighten like 80% of it back up to where it should be. I know it's not perfect, but it does make a huge difference doing it. Lots of parts in here, lots of structural components. Again, I'm not even going to pretend to know what they are. I mean, what's that? I mean, no, no, I'm joking. That's obviously an under tray for the front. There's our dashboard there as well. Very nice. We've got optional, uh, not optional, but extras there. We've got more chassis work, what have you. Loads of little bits there. So, again, you have to go through and figure out where everything is. But to be honest, this one, I don't think this would be too bad to do. And while it is a nightmare, both cleaning and sorting all the parts, it's a part of the build, and it is quite enjoyable. It's quite satisfying to do, in a way, because you're, 
seeing all the parts for the first time, like I am here. Most people will do an inbox review like I have. So I see them the first time like this, and then next time I see them and they're all nice and clean, fresh out the tumbler. And then I get to go through the instructions and figure out what's what in there as well. Another thing as well with your instructions, go and get a nice photocopy of them. Go to your local, I don't know, whatever. Post office did mine for me on the Ferrari and did me a full colour spread. And the pages were in the correct order. It was such a new booklet. He did a great job, the guy at the post office for me. Um, and save your original instructions. Use your copy ones for marking off all your parts. Go through with a highlighter and mark them off. Uh, and keep your original ones for when you're building because it's easier to look at an instruction sheet that isn't covered in loads of marks. Oh my god, there's a lot of parts in here. Right, so we've got more highly finished parts in there. We'll look at in a minute. There's a clutch flywheel, a battery, a headlight, or indicator light, wherever the hell it is, a uh, carburetor. Nice. Okay. Loads of parts, lots and lots of stuff. Starter motor, is that a dynamo alternator? Loads of bits, loads of bits, loads of little rivets. All sorts of stuff in here, really interesting parts. No idea what they are at all, haven't got a clue. But things like the battery, got quite nice detail on it. Now, if you're in a 3D printer, this is where you can go wild and you can make your own stuff and maybe improve it. For me, I don't, so I can't do it. But the clutch flywheel has got some nice detail on it. Very nice. Uh, this thing also has nice bits on it. I've got a clue what it is. No idea, but it looks good. Starter motor, again, nothing to write home about, but decent detail on there to say the least. Uh, I think that's the alternator. That's what it looks like to me anyway. And lots of parts. Carbs there as well. There we go. So lots of nice bits in there. It looks like a good kit so far. That there's not a huge amount of uh, white metal. It's very reminiscent of the Lancia because the Lancia didn't have loads. And these kits are good ones to start on because the Ferrari is massively complicated. The engine alone is over 150 parts. So that is going to take you a while to do. Whereas this, you will make progress a lot quicker. So. Yeah, you'll move on a lot, lot faster. So that is all the white metal. I am not going to open every bag of all those little components we've got because once they're open, some of them, we can't seal them again. So we can seal the bag, I'll look at them. If not, we're going to look at them through the bag. All right, I hope you guys understand that. But I don't really want to be opening things that I really don't need to just yet. I've got some more highly polished bits in here. I'm going to have to take this mat down because it's moving everywhere. There we go. So in here we've got our pedal. Oh, they're nice. Oh, look at those. The AC logo on them. How nice are they? They're really pretty. Very, very cool. We've got some pulleys. Here as well for the engine. Got a fuel filler cap again, really nice. That can just be polished up. I will get that to a high, high shine. And then lots of other bits. Looks like a gear knob and the gear stick there as well. Very nice. And a few other bits and bobs, which I have absolutely no idea. They are. There's the uh, that'll be the boot lid, and that'll be the bonnet turns to hold it shut. Well, the catches, latches, whatever you want to call them. So lots of nice bits in there. That'll be, uh, I'm assuming that is a number plate light in there. You can see that little part on there, that's what it looks like. But yeah, just little touches like that. You see logos on those, accelerator pedal and brake pedal. Very, very cool. Very, very nice. Very, very nice. So like I say, Please, of the three things I'd recommend do, make sure everything's there. Make sure everything is fully molded and cast. And um, make sure there's no broken bits in there. That is my three recommendations for this. When you get the kit, when you're building it, test for everything at every stage. From when you first get out of the bag to you 
shaping parts, get them to fit properly, priming, painting, just test fit after every time because you don't want to get to the build and at the end of it, after all your hard work, you find the doors that you spent three hours shaping don't no longer fit because they're painted. So bear that in mind and just really take your time. These are not kits to be rushed at all. So really take your time on it there. Right, aluminium rims, front and back, obviously because they're staggered. Really nice, but nothing really to look at. It's just nice quality turned aluminium. Very nice, like I say, staggered, two different sizes. So they look really good as well. Goes back in there. Obviously it's a white metal insert, so not too bad. At least you haven't got any spokes to do. So that's good. We've got a vac form screen, which I am not taking out of the bag. Because that's going to stay in there. So that one need cutting out to the right size once you reshape that windscreen. If you can see it closely, there's actually... There you go. You can just see the line there. See it here? There's a line there. You just see a catch at the top on the right there. That's your cut mark. So I'd recommend cutting out the main shape first. And then cutting around close to that. And then trim a fine at the end with some really good scissors rather than trying to wreck it. Uh, we've got another vac form thing in there, which I don't know what it is. We'll figure it out in a minute. We'll look at the instructions. Some more vac form in there. And we've got lots and lots and lots of little bags, which we're going to bring over. Like I said, if they're not sealed bags, we'll have a look. If they are sealed, they're staying sealed. So this is a sealed bag. In there, we have headlights. Can you see them? Rivets, a big rivet, all in there. So I am not opening those until I come to the build. So apologies. Same with this one. We've got some magnets. That'll be for the doors, I assume. O-rings. Some high-quality turned aluminium parts there as well. Very nice. I'm guessing these are for the headlights. And again, beautiful, beautiful parts. We'll look at these as we're building it. So don't worry, you won't miss out. We've got some acetate round clear parts. They'll be for your instruments on the dashboard. So they're all pre-cut and ready to go in there. In here, again, sealed, I'm not opening it. We have some rubberized parts. So we have what I assume is we've got some hoses. We've got some connectors for the HT leads, which are here, you can see, and there. Uh, and we've got a big piece running around the top, uh, which I'm assuming is for the auxiliary belt on the engine, I think. So there's a few parts in there. We've got some black ribbon, which will be for our seat belts, or seat belt, and some double sided tape in there as well. What width diameter belt is that? Wow, that is 5.5 mil ribbon. Okay. Very nice. In here we have a load of some heat shrink. There's some braided um, hollow tubing. We've got some wire there as well. Uh, oh no, there, there's the belt for our auxiliary. Look, so I don't know what that other piece is. Hmm. Okay, we'll have a look at that. But yeah, we've got some hoses and wiring in there. I've got a ton of excess aftermarket stuff for this that maybe can replace this and make it look better. In here, we've got the steering wheel surround. We'll get that out and have a little look at that, I think. I think that warrants a look. There we go. So, beautiful, beautiful resin that isn't deformed in any way, shape, or form. So, uh, yeah, it's going to need a bit of heat on it to straighten that back up. Yep, awesome. And there's the other part of it there, which is uh, equally has bent. Excellent. So they're good. Headlights are there as well. Hang on, did we not have headlights before? We did. So what are they off? Is there driving lights on this as well? Oh yeah, there is. Of course there is. There's separate lights, isn't there? Yes. So we've got some resin lights there. Again, this part has snapped off. Thankfully with no damage. So that's good. There's our resin headlight there. It's actually quite nice very very cool so there's those we've got some little tiny lights there and resin as well 
So again, they look good. Spot on. We have more lights here as well. Quite number plate lights to me or something. I can't quite tell. Um, obviously, I'll steer. I'm going to pop all these back in the bag. Another recommendation, get yourself plenty of plastic storage boxes. That way you can itemize all these parts separate and keep them protected and out of the way. Nothing gets damaged then. In here we have a whole load of screws. So there's all different sizes of black. I'm not going to get them out because I end up losing them. There's a whole load of black screws in there. Big silver one. We've got some metal rod and four springs for the suspension as well. And uh, they look right like the um, uh, Lancia ones. They look actually quite straight. The Lancia ones are rather bent and broken. In here, more white metal parts. A little, little tiny. Uh, we'll get to that in a second, actually. Next one is a sealed bag full of more. Um, there'd be the Tonyu cover poppers, won't they? In there. As well as some other rivets and what have you in there so again sealed bags heat sealed section so they're going to stay sealed and then in here we have some of the smallest white metal rivets i've seen so far on these kits look at the size of them they are minuscule they all look to be the same wow they are tiny those minute yep i don't remember lizard a few more white metal parts not sure what they are but they're all nicely cast and what have you so we've got no issues there'll be our inner headlights as well so again looking good white metal again so i need a good clean up like i say once you get these through your tumbler and i would recommend getting a tumbler it's worth the expense um, the parts are a lot cleaner to handle and a lot nicer to look at as well because they look quite depressing in their dull white metal stage at the minute. So once you get them cleaned up, it does um, just kind of add to the build a little bit. They look a lot more interesting. So I'm just going to pop all these bits out of the way. And all we've got left to look at now is the tyres and... The instructions and all the bits and bobs in there so we'll just grab one set we'll grab these back ones i think they are and just look at these these are lovely so not only are they beautifully printed on the side with firestone they've got a lovely tread on them look very clean as well obviously you got your pore stub here so obviously you'll keep that at the bottom of the car but overall really nice and clean very very nice tires Nicely printed. They're going to look really cool. Nice to get treaded tyres on a kit as well. So it's a case of just snip that off. Literally, you can get your side cutters and just literally snip the majority of it off. And then get a nice sharp scalpel and cut it flat. Like I say, that piece, you will place that at the bottom. The bottom of the kit and... Um, yeah, it's inconspicuous, you wouldn't see it, but lovely tyres, really, really nice. They're going to have a nice touch to the kit. And then the final section is this little lot. So we'll get everything out. You get a nice little uh, plastic wallet to keep everything in. And we'll go through what we've got in here quickly. So you get the plastic wallet, obviously. We've got two frets of photo etch, which we're not going to get out again, because we don't want any of it to tarnish. So there's our inner steering wheel, all brackets, our seat belt are there as well. We've got the lovely logos and what have in there. 427 badges for the engine there. Very cool. Got windscreen surround, grills, all sorts of stuff. A nice Shelby Cobra plaque there as well. Focus. The camera helps. There we go. Very, very nice. Lots of very nice, high quality um, pieces of photo etch on those frets. Really, really nice. So they are very, very high quality. So adds a lot of detail. 
We've got some carpet. Very, very nice suede carpet. I'm not going to get it out. But it is very, very nice high quality carpet. And we've got decals as well. So I'm not a fan of taking decals out, but we'll have a little look at them regardless. So am I going to do the race car or am I going to keep it as a road car? I'm completely undecided right now. I don't know what to do. Um, we'll see about that. We'll play it by ear. But the decals look really, really good. Well in register, well coloured. Very, very nice. Very, very high quality decals. I've never had a problem putting these on yet. The Lancia decals were flawless. The Ferrari ones so far have been good. And they are probably some of the best printed ones I've seen from Mother Fatty Hero. Really, really nice. Although, annoyingly, I've got a crease in that one again. See the crease just there? I had that on the Ferrari. And that can transfer through sometimes to the decal. I hate that. Really do. But anyway, um, nice decals, really nice scheme. Like I say, unsure which scheme I'm going to do yet. Unsure if I'm going to do it as a race car or just do it as my kind of version of a road car. There's two different screens of this. You've got the tall one and the short one as well. Uh, but we'll go through the instructions now and have a look through there. There's a couple of little Castrol decals there as well. Very nicely done. Two. Very cool. So, lovely decal set. Really, really nice. Top quality. Definitely the best one I've seen so far. The ones in Alantia were very kind of like starch stained. So, they weren't the best, but they went down flawlessly. I really can't fault them. They did go down really, really well. If you just get this back in here, it'd be great. But sometimes these bags fight you a little bit because of the sticky back. There we go. Let's get them in. Always keep your decals nice and protected. In there. There we go. We'll seal them back up. There we go. You can go over there. We've got our carpet there as well. We've got our decal sheet. So this is the version we've got, version A. So we can do the Daytona or the SCAA colour. So the number 88's got the shorter screen, as you can see. Still looks good. But I think the more classic, larger screen looks bigger. Like I say... There won't be much in the difference from the road car on this. So which one are we going to go for? I'm not sure yet. I am not sure. There's instructions for the... Um... Okay. Hmm. Let's look at the instructions for those screens. That's confusing. But anyway, we'll look at that later. There's the template carpet inside. So photocopy it. Uses a cutting pattern. Use the excess sheet freely to the back of the seats and the cockpit rears, etc. So they are one to one scale. So you can photocopy that, cut it out, and use that as your template. And then the instructions a very, very thin instruction book on this one, only um, 18 steps in total, or 18 yeah, major steps. Instructions on the front show the car itself, beautiful looking thing. Here we've got some uh, kind of build instructions. So you can read those. It's like, you know, don't chuck your cat in your air fryer or try and juggle you know flaming caterpillars it, it's random stuff uh all the parts are there for the turn parts uh clear parts and rubber parts uh obviously that's not all the parts that's not everything that's literally all those fancy bits we had in the bags at the end so you can go through and kind of use that and then into the instructions instructions are good on model factory hero these are quite nice they're not too busy this engine bay is pretty clean um it's going to be a lot quicker build than the Ferrari because there's no innards to the engine. The engine looks to be a lot simpler. Ah, that's the air cleaner, that bit. That's what that is. Okay, that makes sense now. I see. Okay. Um, so, you know, construction looks really simple. Yeah, we've got the build-up of the main block of the engine, the carburetor, the air cleaner, the pulleys, this uh, distributor. Exhaust to there, all the linkages, gearbox, the bell housing, building up the chassis, onto mount the engine in, the discs, uh, calipers are there as well. We've got uh, rear differential, rear suspension, getting all mounted in the chassis, putting the floor pans in, that looks like the boot lid. 
Let me cut all this kind of framework over the back end as well. Carpet going in, we've got the dashboard, radiator. So I think construction on this is quite good. And this is what you're gonna look out for, the different versions. So make sure you note your version. I would go through with a highlighter on the instruction sheet you're gonna to use to build and make sure you mark off or put a cross through the bits you're not gonna do. It's so easy to pick the wrong piece and start building it. And then halfway through you're like, crap, I didn't need that bit because there will be slight differences as to what goes on what. Uh, like the version C Street version has a uh, glove box, whereas the race one doesn't. So this is where you need to be careful. But you can also go through and see the differences and if you think, oh, I'd rather have that, you could maybe contact Modified Your Hero and say, can I have M227 um, rather than M14 so you get the different dash and all the parts to go with it. It's one way of doing it. Steering wheel assembly. We're then on to the side fins, getting the inner wheel arches on, the boot lid, getting it done, the doors are getting mounted. <clears throat> so it must give you the option that you can pick either the resin or the white metal. Unless the white metal is the door inner. I can't quite see what's going on. It doesn't really show, but I think we'll use the white metal because it's going to be much more stronger to screw into. So that is for sure. Uh, onto the tonu cover pops, um, the different screens, so version A number 88 only. So again, you need to make sure if you're doing that version, mark it so you know. Uh, the street versions there with the wind deflectors on the side and version a b and c with the main screen there too so there's the outer white metal in a vac form in a pe some visors yes there's all sorts there as well um window wipers ah there is that there so what is that it's just a bit of rubber strip on the bottom of the screen. That's a piece that was hanging off before. We couldn't tell what it was. Rear lights are there, rear bumper, the exhaust, wheels going together. Very nice. It looks as though the knock-ons will actually take the wheels on and off. There's a nut. A nut? The hell's a nut? There's a nut in the center there with it. Um, so it's all one component. You can screw it on and off. And then final assembly. Get the doors in place, decals screen there's a supplementary explanation there but we've got an amendment there on this as well which explains that so make sure you go through there's all your rivets on the back which are labeled separately which again is a really nice touch and then the color table which the color call that's all given through the instructions very vague refer to your real life real life references and you can't go wrong and there we go there's the model fatty hero ac cobra so there we go. How cool is that going to be? That's going to be an epic build. Um, it's not super complicated, which is nice. Um, but it's still going to build up to a very, very nice detailed car. I love the Cobra. I built the 16 scale Airfix MPC one. That was a great build. Really enjoyed that one. Um, this one is going to be a next level. So thank you, PK. This is going to be an awesome build. I need to decide now, and you can cast your votes in the comments down below. Should I do it out of the box as one of the race cars, or should I do it as kind of my own kind of road car? Yes, I don't know yet. We'll decide that later. We can do either or. It, it's my kit. We can do what we want. So we'll play that by ear and see how that goes. But it looks wonderful. Really nice. Next step for me will be clean all the parts up, sort it all out. Uh, get it all bagged into the appropriate sections and then put it back away until the Ferrari's done and we can bring it back out hopefully later in the year and get this build on the go. I think Joe's going to start his almost immediately so you will see that one getting done on the daily live streams if you tune in and I'm going to help Joe set up his own modeling page so we can put updates on Facebook in his own area kind of thing as well so that'll be good so keep an eye out but it looks epic typical model fighter hero terrifying and awe-inspiring at the same time um, but like i say it looks a simple kit it doesn't look as complicated as the ferrari so i don't think it'd be actually that bad of a build but there we go there's our review of this today um thanks for watching everyone thank you very much for the donation as well pk massively appreciated as always and as always if anyone would like to support the channel support these videos i've got a patreon me link down below you can pick the applicable tier there's perks of the month with early access exclusive videos 
loads of stuff down there. This is my day-to-day -day job. This is what I, I support my family with doing. Um, so any and all support is greatly appreciated. There's links down below. There's a PayPal me link and a Buy Me Coffee link if you want to do one-off donations as well. And uh, if you ever want to talk to me, there's an email address down below in the description as well. There's links to everything I assemble related, the forum, the Facebook page, the live show, the off-air hangouts, links to ProScale Paints, Man and Simon's company, links to umpretail.com. We've got links to uh, my scale mates. There's an email address, like I say, and there's links to all the products I use in all my videos. Please subscribe to the channel. Give the uh, bell notification a quick tick as well. So you get notified of all the latest videos. Give the video a thumbs up as well because it all adds to the analytics. Leave a comment. Let me know what you think to the kit. Uh, is it any good? What do you think? Would you buy one? Is it too much money? Let me know your thoughts. It's always interesting to hear. Uh, this is getting released straight to ISM, no early release on this, I want this video out there, so um, you're all seeing this at the same time, so let's hear your opinions on the kit, and should I do it as the race car, or my own version of a road car, what should I do, there we go, thanks for watching today everyone, take care, bye bye.